Well, hey everybody out there. Um, this is Pat and Heidi from Rain Country, and we got tagged. We got hey, tagged from <laughs> we got tagged from Living Tradition Homestead, Kevin and Sarah. And we'll link to their channel right up here. Right up here, I think. <laughs> and uh, what the tag is about is why we garden and why we like to garden. So there's five questions we have to to answer and I don't think there was any real name one set name for this collaboration but we're gonna call it why we love to garden I guess so <laughs> we're gonna go through these questions and get them answered for you and then we're gonna we're gonna tag five other channels and we'll post all those channels and links down below and be adding any new videos we come across as part of this collaboration to our playlist that this video right here will be in. One of the questions that uh, one of five is why do we garden? We garden because of health and self-reliance. Those are in a nutshell. Um, I'm a pretty simple guy so I think simply and and that's just about that's that is the primary reason right. we is. garden is for health and self-sustainability. Yeah, because we want to grow, by growing our own foods, we know what's going in the soil because we go organic and we, you know, we know the produce that we're getting out of there is going to be healthy and actually have flavor to it, unlike some of the stuff you may get from your regular store. Like around here, it is pretty difficult to find a good tasting tomatoes at the store. So growing our own is... That's why we started with tomatoes many years ago. In fact, our kids were little babies when we first started growing things like that. Right. But you know, yeah. just just the uh, health benefits, um, not just in what you're consuming, but what you're actually doing. If you're out there in the garden, you're uh, you're digging soil. Your hands are in the soil, and uh, not to get all weird and goofy, but working in the dirt is actually good for you. And it's not weird and goofy because it's actually scientific. And I do believe I mentioned in another video about fulvic acid and other enzymes that are in the soil. And those are those enzymes, when you get your hands and your feet, your bare skin into the soil and it gets into your skin, you're getting those good beneficial nutrients and enzymes into your body and into your bloodstream. And those particular enzymes are not only just great for your overall health, they also are very much of an antidepressant, and this is scientifically proven. So gardening actually does scientifically, not just mentally, not just emotionally, but through your physiology makes you happy. That's still kind of weird, though. But it's true. <laughs> and like I said before, I think it's just great that God gave us the command there in Genesis that, you know, we got to get out there and work that garden mm -hmm. and till that ground. And yet he gave us that wonderful gift of making us happy by doing so. But, you know, just the, uh, the other benefits of growing your own garden is to see those, see that you're you actually have a hand in bringing forth that right. life, watching that growth and, and being able to nurture that plant uh, to its end result and that is uh, great food for your bodies. Being able to produce for yourself, that's just a, it's just a great feeling. And here's another thing a lot of people may not even think about when it comes to gardening is that it is incredibly environmentally friendly. You're right. providing uh, you know, especially when you're growing things that f have lots of flowers and, you know, herbs and whatever it is, you're providing nutrients and stuff to the bees and the butterflies and the hummingbirds, you know, and plants, they clean the air. So not just indoor plants, but outdoor plants. And we know that we're surrounded with so much uh, garbage in our air and our food and in our water. But if we're growing these things, they're actually cleaning the air all around us. So it's just a great thing to do. And it's so much better than grass. <laughs> well, if, uh, actually the fun in seeing what grows in your particular area and how to grow it. And, you know, it becomes an art and it becomes a, a very, uh, very practical skill. Uh, in your in your venture to be self-sufficient and self-reliant and be a homesteader or a prepper or whoever you think you are. <laughs> and it's rewarding. It's rewarding. So it's many absolutely different rewarding. There he is. Yeah. So let's go to question number two. So how long have we been gardening? 
Well, our well first, it, the first greenhouse you built was before the kids were even born. Right. That was when we first started growing tomatoes. Well, I was a kid when we, you know, we used to grow our own, you know, we, we used to grow our own food. And, you know, we'd get breads and salt and pepper and flour and stuff like that from the store. But for the most part, we, we grew our own meat, uh, poultry, eggs, obviously, and uh, we had our own garden. And we used to put that up and that will last us throughout out the year. Uh, that, growing up that wasn't called homesteading or wasn't called prepping, it was just called life. <laughs> we just we just grew a garden and that's just the way it was. He built, he built a greenhouse uh, when the kids were babies and we grew some pretty good sized tomatoes. Oh yeah. We grew some other things in there too. The tomatoes were the big thing though. Yeah. And, um, tomatoes have always been just a main, pretty much a main staple. Because right. I make so many Italian foods and Mexican foods and things that require lots of tomatoes so mm -hmm. yeah and we just like fresh tomatoes anyway. we do. they're yes. just so good mm -hmm. you know we did garden off and on grow a few different things off and on but really got serious into expanding and doing you know pretty much using our whole backyard as a garden about six years ago right yeah so and we've been getting more serious ever since <laughs> right, and so, and, and you know, I keep expanding the front garden a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Can't really do more in the West Herb Garden because it's also a firewood storage slash preparation slash uh, apple Processing. orchard. Uh, yeah, we, have because we got one. Well, we got one, oh, one of our apple trees, our main apple mm -hmm. trees out there. And anyway, um, so, and then what do you grow? Is that number three? Yep, number three is what do you grow? So I we will forget everything that we grow. We'll just do kind of a brief list. You know, we grow several different types of berries, strawberries, raspberries. We do pretty good with raspberries and blueberries. We do have a thornless blackberry, but we do most of get our, most of our blackberries wild. Uh, we have ap two apple trees. One is still in a pot that we hope to put in the ground someday. Yeah, we should be putting that in this year. Yeah. Probably. And, uh, and then we have our main apple tree, which, like I mentioned, is on the west side of the house. And let's see. And then there's, like, our, as far as annuals go, we have zucchini and pumpkin and spaghetti squash. Lots of beans. Lots and lots of beans. In fact, I'm going to try a couple, another new variety of beans and a new variety of snow peas this year. You know, thankfully, one of the, some of the things that we can grow really good here in rain country is squash, beans, and peas. Right. And uh, tomatoes can do pretty good, but really kind of need a greenhouse for tomatoes. We grow some hot peppers, you know, what we can. It's kind of limited because of our short growing season, but we do what we can. So I usually do some cayenne peppers. Last year, I grew some serranos and did pretty good with those. Mm -hmm. uh, tomatillos. Tomatillos. I started last year and I'm sold on them. I'll be doing those again for sure because um, I really like the green salsa that we got, our salsa verde, and that, we got a little peach tree. And we got our we got two little peach trees actually. We've got, got one a as a door, mm -hmm. a miniature, and then the other one is semi dwarf, and that's the one where we got the one peach. We got one, one peach last year because we yeah. we transplanted that that tree last year. Um, you know, destroyed a whole bunch of roots. We we tried to. Carefully surgically remove it, but that didn't, you know. But it still it, it did still really gave us great. a peach, you know. So thank you very much. We we put uh, a bucket load of horse manure in the hole before I put the tree in, so it it said, "Well, thank you very much." <laughs> so yeah. So I, and hopefully this year it will give us more. So we didn't think we could even grow peaches here in our area because they're more of a dry climate thing. That's, but this particular peach is supposed to do okay right. in a more maritime maritime climate. So we'll see. Hopefully this year we'll get a few more off of it, but we also um, grow onions. We and grow garlic. onions and potatoes and garlic. I have herbs galore, and I'm always adding more herbs. And as I said in the other video, all herbs are medicinal to some degree, but you'll have some herbs that are are not really culinary herbs, but they're they're mostly just medicinal. But I do them all. So sage. And oregano and mints grow amazingly well here. I never have any problems with those. As far as medicinal, you know, strictly more medicinal. I have feverfew, marshmallow. Though marshmallow is a, it's a vegetable too, and so is amaranth. It's mm -hmm. very healing. So is borage. 
uh, borage we use as a medicinal herb and a vegetable and as chicken fodder and to help encourage bees because bees love oh, borage yes. and I, I have videos on a lot of these herbs already and more coming out that I'll be doing this spring and summer about the medicinal properties and the garden benefits to these different herbs because a lot of people just might go, go okay I'm going to grow fever few because it's good for pain, but it's also really good for your garden because it helps repel certain uh, pests, uh, non-beneficial pests, while drawing in the beneficial bugs like butterflies and bees. And borage is the same. And it's very, you know, just so good for your garden. But anyway, I have more videos on that and we'll talk more about it down the road. And potatoes. I did try Kale. sweet potatoes last year and they didn't do so great, but I might try again. We don't really have sweet potato climate, but I'm going to go ahead and try it again because I always say keep trying and sometimes you'll find the things that are not supposed to grow in your area. Well, if you keep working at it, you might be able to get them to grow. Oh, and corn. We don't do great with corn, but part of it is finding just the right variety and we can't grow so many you can only grow on such a small area one variety of corn at a time mm -hmm. uh, obviously because it's going to cross pollinate and last year i did the glass gem and it did pretty good it gave me quite a few ears they're all pretty small but they're um but they're nice looking ears and so i'm going to use the how cute the corn off of these and and see if i can do better with it since it's already been you know acclimated well, yeah. to our area and see how we do i have some that are a little bigger than that some that are smaller but we'll see i you know i'm just trying to find a good corn that will do great in our area and i like the idea of a dual purpose like the gem glass gem because it's also a popcorn and cucumbers we do cucumbers off and on i don't think i grew any last no oh, i did grow some cucumbers last year i go off and on with the cucumbers but we did get some cucumber seeds from one or our, our one of our subscribers i'd really like to try mm -hmm. Um, I love cucumbers, but they do tend to take up a lot of room in the greenhouse and uh, around that's here. That's why we're doing a cattle panel thing. So we yeah. grow up because of the limitations of our area. We are practicing with growing up instead of out with some of these uh, viney type plants. But, you know, we have to grow cucumbers. I haven't found a cucumber yet that would do well outside in our area. They do best in the greenhouse and my greenhouse space is kind of limited and I try to save that for my tomatoes. But I'm hoping to get my tomatoes. Uh, Amish paste is the big one that I grow and I'm trying to get them more acclimated where I could grow more outside. But if nothing else, those green tomatoes, I'm finding more and more great mm -hmm. uses. They make a wonderful relish and I have a video on uh, homemade green tomato and zucchini relish and it was it's really good and I also will add them in with the tomatillos when I make the salsa verde and that works out pretty good. I've also grown a <clears throat> plethora of ground cherries the year before I just had ground cherries I couldn't keep up on them all I had ground cherries coming out my ears and those are a really a really good thing to grow I didn't really get much this last year but I might grow them again this year um let's see what else do we got that i might not be thinking of i don't know i know i'm gonna forget there's there's lots of things that even on our little third acre that we grow and we keep adding more to it what is our favorite thing to grow All anything that tastes good <laughs> well fever few doesn't taste good but i like well growing. you know you get used to it uh it's good for you so that's if it's good yeah. for you it must be good right yeah. um it's a bitter herb it's a bitter herb. It's really, not um, only is it good for pain and inflammation, it's great for your digestive. Well, I'd have to say, I'd have to say a good ripe red tomato is probably our favorite prized thing here. Um, love potatoes. Uh, oh, gosh, we have, you know, <laughs> it's really hard to pick a favorite. Uh, I guess it depends on what, what you're looking at, what you're thinking about. I love growing the, um, the scarlet runner and the and the sunset runner beans i love growing those because to me they add so much beauty to the garden as they climb and go everywhere and send out their bright colored flowers and then they give they give us huge green beans i mean they can get really huge and then i let them keep growing and then i can use the the let them get dry and they make a great dry bean for chili and all kinds of stuff so mm -hmm. i love those but i'll be also adding some other beans but i love growing beans because of that because they just add so much beauty to the garden um 
Gosh, I don't know. It's really hard to pick one favorite. I would have to say, I'd have to say a good cucumber is probably one of my oh, favorite things good. to eat out of the garden. Oh, wait a minute, raspberries. Hmm. Oh, and ra the raspberries, you know. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. It's, <laughs> it, it, we can't pick one. You know, they all have their different great wonderfulness about them, but that's why we grow them all. Can I pick for you guys the three uh, favorite? Would that be the raspberries and the cucumbers and the tomatoes? I know you like eating those We like garlic like too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, and Let's then the, number five. <laughs> the last one isn't actually about gardening. It's about why we YouTube. Oh. For me, since I'm the one that got the channel started in the first place, my reasons might be slightly different uh, than some, and the reason I mostly started, and that was because I'm always, I, I love to create things from different kinds of foods. I love finding things that are healthy, things that help, help medicinally, you know, in our food and the way we make things and, and doing things from scratch, and I was always kind of trying to get that information out there in other ways and I hadn't con even considered YouTube. I just put it out there on Facebook and and it seemed like I would reach a few people but I never felt like I was really reaching the amount of people or the people that really wanted to hear mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. and, um, and, the, and then the people that did they were always like if I shared something they were always wanting a written recipe. Well if anyone's been following me for a while, they'll know that a lot of times I just throw things together and I don't follow a recipe. She's like a tornado in the kitchen. And I don't write these things down. It's just kind of in here. I just sort of put things together and I might change it up every time. So people are wanting written recipes. And so I started thinking, well, maybe if I go ahead and start doing videos when I'm making this stuff, I can show people how I'm doing it and then they can just take it and run with it from there. At least they can see what the amounts look like and all that kind of stuff because I measure with my hands, I measure with lids from things. I very rarely use measuring spoons and cups. So I just kind of look, I go by sight and smell and, and uh, volume, you know, just how it looks. and. So that was one of the reasons I got started. And then it kind of blossomed from there. And I initially hadn't planned on talking much about my garden or anything like that. But already, though, we already had a pretty good garden going when we started YouTube. Mm -hmm. But it, you know, it seemed like people wanted to see right. what we were doing. And then they wanted to, they liked seeing what Mr. Rain was doing. So we started incorporating him more and more in his projects. <laughs> And so our channel started to grow from there and became pretty much just all about everything that we do around here. And, uh, and of course, you know, eventually we decided to go ahead and monetize our channel because it's a lot of work. Uh, the more the more you're doing it, the more the more work is involved, and you got equipment you got to pay for, you know, the lights and the camera and all this kind of stuff. And so, we were hoping to be, you know, at least make a little bit of monetary compensation for our time that we pour into this. And so that's you know that's that's why we have commercials on our videos, and but we try not to overpopulate the our our videos with with commercials either. We want to tr still make a good viewing ex experience for you but also help you right. know compensate our time um, and but it's you know but we do also do it because we love it we love right. getting the in information out there we love being able to reach people the the community involvement where people get in and they interact and they share our, their ideas with us and then I can take their ideas and make another whole video and say hey so and so told me about this or You're I all learned about this. sharing yeah, information and, and, people uh, are really hungry for that yeah because I've had people share recipes with me and mm -hmm. you know in comments I'm like hey I'm going to give that a try and then make a video out of it and so that that's been kind of fun and, and so and, and it's just been I think really encouraging for Mr. Rain and I to be able to feel like we finally have been able to connect with a group of people that right. that that not only want the information that we have to share but have something that they can give back in, in, in their own skills and their own stories and sharing what works best for them, whether it be sewing or woodworking or gardening or cooking. It's, you know, it's been very rewarding.
So, well, I'm, I talked the whole time on that. Did you have anything you wanted to add? You're going to give me a five-second spot. Yep. There you go. <laughs> five. She, I think she pretty much uh, hit the nail on the head. And uh, we're all about self-sufficiency and uh, doing it yourself and different things. By doing what we love to do and sharing with you and you sharing with us your time, that allows us... A little bit of monetary gain to uh, hopefully be self-sufficient here on yeah. our little tiny homestead and in in the future who knows what that might lead us so um, now we are so grateful for the people that come in here and, and share their knowledge with us and share their time with us and it's just been it's just been a real great experience and it's been a motivator for us so yeah. that's why we YouTube <laughs> there we go okay well, I think that about covers it, and we still have to tag five more channels. So, I'm going to go ahead and just read them off real quick. So, <laughs> the first one is uh, our Bev Volfi over at our Half Acre Homestead, uh, Willow Creek Homestead, Freedom Homestead, uh, Bandana Grandma, and JM in the Nut House. I'm, I'm challenging you, JM. You got to get out there and put another video out, lady. Yeah, Jen, get on that. <laughs> so we got tagged by Living Traditions Homestead, and that's uh, Kevin and Sarah. So we were challenged to tag five people. Now we've tagged five people. So go check out all their channels from Living Traditions all the way through the, the list of five, and we will link to all of them below. And. Thanks for watching. Take care. And God bless.